Yo guys, it's Catbus Chad. Hope you're all well. Um, I am bringing you guys a bit of a quick update. Um, I'm going to try and keep it nice and short because there's not a lot changed. Um, basically, uh, we've changed to a new setup that allows punishment and uh, withering step. Now, why is this? Because today we dropped ourselves a pair of windscreen boots. Um, and that allows us to play basically three curses. So two from the Animate Guardian, one from ourselves, right? Additionally, we realized that uh, in order to get Withering Step, we didn't really have enough gem sockets to keep the other aura like Vitality or Defiance Banner. And I wasn't really noticing Vitality doing anything for us, if I'm honest. It helps our minions a tiny bit, but um, for us, it basically does nothing. So all the like all our life recovery comes back from the leech. So we're like, all right, let's drop vitality. For the content we're doing right now, defiance banner isn't needed at all. We are boss rushing for awakened gems because we're kind of just taking a break from getting the immutable force. Um, so we don't really need defiance banner. Um, the good news is, if you want to run defiance banner, you can actually just drop punishment and put it in there. Um, but you will have to change your anoint. Um, you might be able to like change your helmet implicit and you'll probably be able to fit it in then. But yeah, you, we, we changed our anoint to death achievement to get ourselves an additional specter. So that gives us another zombie and an additional specter. Now this actually works out to be quite a significant damage upgrade. So prior to having the temporal chains on hit gloves, um, we were doing a level 21 despair uh, with 7 million damage. But we are also, we were not able to run Pale Seraphim and Arena Master. And with these Spectres, we always have the amount of debuff. Because the debuffs, they're only up for 50% of the time, right? They, they last a duration, and then you multiply that duration by two, and that's how long the cooldown is, right? So it's not 100%, so we always have this. So if we remove that, uh, and then we go, uh, we do one less uh, Zombie. We were doing 6 million damage, right? So let's uh, go back to despair. Make this level 1. And then put enemies on low life. And then put back in our specters. We are now doing 7.6 mil. Now remember, right? While enemies on low life, this means basically the curse is 50% effective, right? So we go 7.6 minus basically 6 mil. Right, that's uh, 1.6 million damage. So divide that by two. That's 800,000 uh, damage just from this curse. Right. So basically, we're doing uh, 7.6 minus 800,000. So 6.8 million damage right now. So previously, you saw how we're doing 6 million. Well, now we're doing 6.8 million. It did come at the cost of running Vitality or Defiance Banner. So there is that. And um, you can drop uh, your punishment if you don't want to, like, do that. Um, and, you know, you'll still be doing um, respectable damage. Now, the other thing that is good for you guys that don't actually have the despair on hit gloves is if you just don't have those, basically, all you do is you don't run punishment. You run level 21 despair. And you'll see that you're actually doing 7 million damage compared to 6.8 million damage. Now, why we go the despair on hit punishment route is that it's basically um, the, the reason for it is like, yes, we do less single target damage. Okay, there is that. But the animate guardian is applying despair and temporal chains for us to a wide pack of monsters. Soon as one thing explodes, it applies temporal chains and despair to the entire screen, basically, right? And it's gonna like it's gonna be the entire screen once we harvest enchant our um, weapon to have increased area of effect. Have we got a spare one somewhere? I don't know. Somewhere we have a spare one. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's basically like you have a lot better um. AOE on the curses, and you don't really have to apply curses as often because punishment is reserved for the monsters that aren't dying. Okay, because and you have a really long time to apply it. Like, you know, it depends on how tanky they are. It's only when they're below fifty percent of their life. So, 
you know, by that time you're like, well, I should probably play a punishment. So right now the build is just haste and convocation. And anytime something's not dying, press temporal chains. If you're dying, press molten shell. That's, that's it. It's how I like to play the build. I don't like shield charge. Uh, we have flame dash because, well, you have to flame dash over obstacles sometimes. And you kind of want to still have that. So that's why we have second wind on it. I don't think that's a negotiable support gem. I find it to be way too clunky without second wind. So I do think you should take that. Let's file this right now. We, we actually, um, Hey, we've got a level 21. Nice. Cool. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that. Um, in other news, we actually became a hundred percent curse immune. So we found ourselves a stack of divination cards from heist that gave us a 22% reduced effect of curses on us. Uh, combined with all of our tattoos and this chaos uh, node here, we are 100% curse immune. So there's that. Um, when we swap our tattoos to being, uh, you take 5% reduced damage from, 5% uh, reduced extra damage from critical strikes, um, we will swap this rarity suffix on our flask to be 65% reduced effect of curses. Um, combined with this uh, jewel, it'll be like 88% reduced of curse, uh, effective curses or something, uh, 87. So it's still like, it's still basically you are curse immune. So yeah, that's really good. Uh, very happy with this jewel for that reason. Uh, we also got ourselves a hunter belt, which I couldn't believe it. This is the first one that we've ever crafted that's actually worked out. Every time we've tried to craft this belt in previous leagues, it's just given us like a bad modifier and I never end up getting another hunter's exalted orb. And it's like, I never end up having, like, I don't ever want to farm the essences to make a better belt. So I kind of just like give up and settle for a shit belt. And then somehow I find a mage blood or some shit. So like, I don't know, like last league I found a mage blood and the league before that, I think I just settled for a shit belt. So, you know, it is what it is. So this is the first time that we've actually been able to successfully craft a really nice hunter belt. Uh, so it has T1 flat life, T10 mana, but that mana is not a dead stat. It's actually a really, really nice stat. Um, even the rolls on this are like really nice. Like it's perfectly divine fire res, perfectly divine chaos res, perfectly divine life, one off maximum life. Uh, yeah, so it's quite nice. Um, this does get us completely chaos resistance capped. So that's nice. The downside is this is not our best in slot belt. In the future, we will actually be using a darkness in throne to take the chance of poison off our tree and instead put it on our belt. Um, that way we can get a little bit more damage out. Um, but that does require a bit of crafting um, and going the legion jewel. So that's like the next, that's like the end game phase of the build, right? But for now, this is like really good. And I don't know when I'm going to be able to transition, honestly. Could be a long time. We, we have to craft new gear, essentially. Keep divining our jewel. So yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, got a new belt. It's nice. Um, before I go, I'll explain to you guys how to get your new Spectre. The new Spectre as your fourth should be Pale Seraphim. How do we get that? Well, um, there's a bit of tech that you can do. So you come over to your Atlas tree and you look up here, it says Pale Clarion. Beyond demons in your map have a 100% increased chance to be followers of Baydat. Pale Seraphims are followers of Baydat. So this is going to dramatically increase the amount of Pale Seraphims in your map. Now, um, if you're doing this, you need to take out Bone Offering and Desecrate. So don't do this on hardcore. You're going to die. All right. Or do it like low tier maps or something. I don't know. Just don't die. But anyway, block is like such a big defense layer for us that, uh, yeah, we died a lot of times trying to get this. Um, so additionally, you kind of want to juice all your beyond chance. Like I didn't invest too much into the tree because I don't have a lot of unmaking obs at the moment. There's like all of these beyond points. There's actually a lot of beyond on the tree and you can take all of this and you'll get it right. Additionally, we use the scarabs with magic pack size beyond demons, beyond portals, and we benchcrafted beyond. Uh, we're now out of chaos orbs trying for this because it actually took us a few maps. So, but uh, we didn't realize that um, Pale Seraphim actually belonged to Baydat until like the second or last map. So, once we did that, 
The one thing is you need to be really quick in summoning the corpse because you have like one to two seconds before the corpse just disappears. So yeah, you that's why we really want to remove our offering. Um, I would go further and say remove animate guardian so that the corpses don't explode. I don't know how that works. Pretty sure maybe the Asinas gloves, like, they mess with this. I don't know. Just remove animate guardian, all right? Um, yeah, explosion also, like, does remove corpses as well. So, I like normal explode. So, yeah, remove that. Um, yeah, I don't think there's many more updates than that. So, I will leave you guys there. Take care and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.